Beauty. Live. We're live. And we are live. Hey, hey, it's Thursday. Woohoo! Woo, Eva is running around the back, doing a lap. Hand sanitizer Hand time, kids. Ow! Stingy. <laughs> you got a cut, paper cut. Ow! Oh. Um, so you got one today, Esther. Because we've been doing lots of renovations. We've got little, like, nicks and stuff in our hands, and we've discovered every new one that we've got every <gasps> every time we put on hand sanitizer, which is fun. Well, use more hand sanitizer in the last month than I've used in my whole body life. It's unreal. That's the idea. Do it cold. Indeed. Yeah. Well, Liz Hayes is on. Christine is on. Lovely. Hey, Christine. Hey, Liz. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, so, why... Are we doing Sangiovese today? What what made that decision? Um, because we can. Right. Cool. That's and because question. it's red wine, um, because it's fun, um, it's topical, and I like it. Mm. Fair enough. All right. Well, actually, Ross was looking at photos of Italy and France today, and it was getting a bit sad. So I think he's Ross in is the feeling mood a bit for nostalgic. Back in the days when we could just travel somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. Most years. Vivian and Ross go away in the middle of the year around June, July. So I can understand why Ross is feeling a bit nostalgic for something a bit international. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Sangiovese, Italian grape variety. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. Spoiler alert. I think we knew that already. Well, just to make Not sure everyone's on the right page. Know. We've got three to taste. One from Puglia, one from Tuscany, and one from the King Valley Ooh. in Australia. Luke was up with that one. Um, Sangiovese is grown pretty much all over Italy, except for a couple of the northern provinces. Um, everywhere from Puglia in the bottom of the south of Italy to past Tuscany in the, the north. Andrea's been to Tuscany. Andrea is on the line. She's in sunny Brisbane. Woohoo! Woo Hello, Andrea. Um, interestingly enough, how would you describe Sangiovese? It's a bit like... Sangiovese in Italy is a bit like um, Shiraz in Australia. It pretty much grows everywhere and produces a whole variety of interesting and good wines. Um, in terms of where it sits in the, the ferment of things, first of all, pellet weight is sort of halfway between Shiraz and Pinot, so it's a bit heavier than Pinot and a bit lighter than Shiraz. So a middle weight. Yeah, so it's a nice weight. It's good food wine. And in terms of flavour, it's a bit more... Not as fruity as Pinot, but a bit spicier like Shiraz is. So palate-wise, mm. palate it's sort of, again, sort of halfway between the two. And it's a really good food wine. Oh, what are we starting with, please, Christina Bass? So we're, we're starting, starting with a Pasqua. Mm. That's from Puglia in the south of Italy, which is sort of the heel of Italy, really. It is the heel. The heel. So we're starting at the bottom and working our way up. So what do we smell? Um, and for anyone wondering, this is sort of our baseline wine. It starts around fifteen, uh, sixteen dollars, fifteen yeah. to twenty bucks. Mm, whoa. Okay. I'm getting some really lovely sort of um, plummy things. Plum, plum and blackberry. Yeah, I'm getting blackberry. Mm. It's interesting, even I'm, though it's unripe plum. Yeah. It's got a nice acidity on the nose, which is, I think, why we're getting What do you think, Eva? Nice purple colour? Yeah, I'm thinking it's quite... Not purple. It's, it's ready. Burgundy. Yeah. Which, I would go... I would be whisker. a bit of a dick enough to say that it's garnet. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> you can tell who went to ask Is that school. bouquet garnet? No, that is not bouquet garnet. <laughs> mm. Hello, Paul. We're starting with the Pasqua. This one. Alistair. Hi, Al. How are you? Mm. Oh, how is Al? Oh, no. Which out? We've got too many. We've got too many Alistair people. Payne, I wish I could have stayed around for this. Oh yeah, you missed him, right? Vivian. Vivian. Well, yeah. Stopped in before. Lovely. Like oh, the the smell on this is getting better and better. It? It's almost. I get a bit of. It does get better as it, as yeah. it smells a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is what I found with sort of the darker, darker wines that still carry sort of berries and fruits. Like the flavours you get from Pinot, but something a bit heavier, a little bit of oxidisation, a little bit of air into it. Yeah, okay. Opens it up. There's a little bit Interestingly of. Interestingly, though, that green, that, that unripe plum smell, not green plum, it's an unripe red plum. That unripe red plum is not getting any riper. <laughs> Do you know, it's, that, that smell is still. It's unripe. I'm getting a bit of um, herbal note to it. Maybe it's like roses or. 
Yeah. I'm really yeah. enjoying the no the smell of this. I'm not sure. Mm, this is I can't quite put my finger on this one. Oh, you better drink it then. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's silly and giggly already. Yeah. Oh yeah. Been one of Ooh. those days. Mmm. This is um. And he's watching also from Queensland. Cheers. Lulu lava. Um. Paul says it's an amazing colour. It is amazing colour. It's got a really. I'm jumping straight to the palette, but mm. it's got a really great dry finish that's almost like um like a tart red apple. Thick. See, I've never drank sand before, and I find it quite soft. Yes. Is, that, is it meant to be soft? Yes. yes. Okay, there you go. Mm. Andrea asks, what is it? What is good to eat with the wine? Well, we were going to get to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, I think this would be what fabulous with pasta. Pasta, yeah. I think this goes really well with, um, with like an extra sauce. rare, rare meats. So if you like, if you like your, your roasts or your steak a little bit rare, something like this would be really nice. Yeah. Something nice and juicy. I think it's a bit bigger to go with steak. Um, I no, I mean like, like like delicate. Rare what about prosciutto? Or yeah, I was thinking like a cheese board. Cheese board. Yeah, a cheese board kind of thing. Mm. Yep. Yeah, My problem with this is that it's slightly too light. I think it might get swallowed up by things like brie and the salt That's and stuff fair. in mm. a cheese board. Well, so go with Italian cheeses and not French ones. Mm. There still can be in terms of Italian. Ah, cheese. I know that. I know that. The pellet thing is, it's uh, it's um, olive leaves. <laughs> olive, olive. <laughs> Both like can't say I've ever eaten an olive leaf. Oh, you can't. No, can't there you go. You've never lived then. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I, I get this an olive olive -ne olive flavour. I do understand the olive. Mm. I don't understand the olive leaf. I think you've gone too specific. Bella said, "Love the new hair, Luke." Yeah, you've noticed. Well, hard not to notice. Beautiful. Hard not, not, not to notice. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ash has said a pizza wine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Oh, I think yeah. This would be good with the olives, the salami, the. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because it's quite light, you could quite dangerously drink this. And with mozzarella. And with oh, mozza would be good. A mozza with mozza? Mmm. Mmm. Christina mm. said like a brown butter pasta. Yeah. A buttery pasta. I'm also getting like a little bit of tart cherry. Like, yeah. Like, like first cherries of the season sort of thing. Mm. <gasps> mushrooms. Mushrooms. This would go really mushroom. good with mushrooms. Mushroom, mushroom yeah. risotto. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. A little, a little, little bit of shaved truffle on top, and we'll be giggling. <laughs> it's a bit extravagant, right? I know. It's yeah, great. We're talking about truffles, actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Paula said very specific palate notes there, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Indeed. Mm. Now, what sort of climate? Well, I guess it's quite a warm variety to grow sand. Yeah, I suppose it's not a cool climate wine, but it pretty much like most climates, it grows. As I say, it's a bit like Shiraz; it'll grow pretty much anywhere. Yeah, okay. And in Italy, it's but mainly the warmer ones. So like, but when you get down the south, it's quite hot. Yeah, okay. But even Tuscany, where it's probably the most prevalent, is you know it's pretty warm. Um. So what we're talking about is. Puglia is in the south of Italy, a little bit warmer climate than something like your Tuscany, which is middle to higher up um, yeah. in Italy. So we will be moving from a warmer climate to a cooler climate, Sanj. It's still not cool climate. Cooler is what I'm saying, Russ. Yeah. Well, cooler. Yeah. Um, but I think this is just a really good wine for the price. I think that there's a lot of complexity in that with the 15 or 16 bucks. Well, I would say we sell lots of it. Mm. For that no, reason, I think also like around the sixteen dollar mark, you really want you really want um, something that's going to go well with a meal. You know, if if I'm going to sit down and just with some friends and just taste nice fancy wine, you know, I don't need to be eating something at the same time. Yes. But if I just want something to take home to have with dinner, you know, something you know in the middle of the week, something affordable, mm. you want something that's going to go really well with food. Pizza, which is like bang. Thursday night. Spaghetti bog. It's almost the end of the week. It's time for pizza. Nice. Oh, I reckon spaghetti bog. I reckon a sort of a nice ragu. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I reckon I'm going to go home and have some Sangiovese and pizza. Oh, not bad. 
Yeah, we've got people saying pepperoni or pine mushrooms, if you're really baller. Oh, Ooh. pine mushrooms, that's a good bet. All right. Baller. Well, hey. Go L. That's a combo. Yeah, I like the idea. Pine mushrooms would be, not, would be nice. Um, now, for anyone at home, I'd like to apologise. We have picked a wine with a cork in it. But it so makes it a bit of fun. Bottles, so I'll be able to just screw the tops off. Yeah, so if you've got a tasting flight of half bottles, you won't have to do this. Yeah. Um, now, making sandwich, how do they do it? Anything different? No, Anything nothing. Unique? Yet. No, it's, again, I'd say sh like Shiraz. Okay. Now Grow the grapes, get them nice and ripe, squash them, um, let now, them ferment. What sort of wood are we putting in these? Yeah. Of... Um, usually they usually old oak barrels. Okay. And how, do you know how much? From what I understand, aged? Um, things like, the, there's a conversation to be had about the type of grape that produces each of the wines that we talk about. And some grapes are more temperamental than others. Pinot particularly being temperamental. Well, Pino, from, Pinot's temperamental for a number of reasons, but the most obvious one in Australian terms is fairly, very thin-skinned, so it tends to be fairly um, easily damaged, and that can be the sun damage, so it can get sunburnt if it gets too hot without actually being ripe, but it's not developing sugars. Gervaise. And the other thing is, and it's also temperamental of a whole lot, because it's thin-skinned, it's also prone to mildew and all those I'm sorts of things. Pino. Um, but, but Sanchez seems to be pretty robust. The reason yes. you'll find Sangiovese tends to be very popular in Italy and more affordable than a lot of, you know, European wines is because it's a pretty robust grape, from what I understand. Yeah. Which, you know, which is why Ross likens it to things like Shiraz in Australia, which we can grow anywhere and do a lot of things with. And it's pretty, well, it's bloody hardy. And so is the Sanchez. Now, Sangiovese in terms of Italy, now we've got a Chianti, yeah? Lots of jokes in the 60s and 70s were made wow. about Chianti because there were some pretty crappy Chiantis around. Now, Chianti is Sangiovese from Tuscany. Not all of Tuscany, but the, the designated as Chianti parts of Tuscany, but Sangiovese from Tuscany is called Chianti. There you go. Mm. That simple? Mm. And, it's and it doesn't come in a raffia no, there's there's something quite funny about conversations I often have with customers about when they say they want a Chianti and I say, oh, and I start talking about San Giovese and they go, no, I don't want San Giovese because a lot of people got so popularised by Chianti that they didn't actually realise what the wine was, um, which is quite Paul funny. Paul has asked, is San Giovese the same as Brunello? Uh, Brunello is... Ma like Chianti, made from Sangiovese. Okay. From um, a different region. Well, there's a whole lot of other specs around it. But yeah, Brunello's Sangiovese, made with Sangiovese grapes. The other thing with Chianti is it doesn't have to be 100% Sangiovese. It has to be at least 90% Sangiovese. There's a couple of other grape varieties you're allowed to slide in there. And there's also a thing these days called the Super Tuscan, so the other 10% is often made up with Cabernet and or Merlot. Okay. Um, I particularly like the Sangiovese Merlots, they're really delicious, but mm. it just lifts it for some reason. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what are we getting on the nose? Let's this let's is dive in. This is, the, mm. sort of this like is definitely Pino. got a little bit more funk to it, a little bit more woodiness, a I little bit Alistair, more musk. This, I, Alistair, I think this is pine mushroom territory. <laughs> I feel like this one's not quite as aromatic as the other one, because with the Pasca, as soon as you opened it, passed it to me, I was like, whoa, I can smell that. With this one, I had to stick my nose into it and smell it. I think it's it's more darker, richer mm. sort of scent, so it might be a little darker bit... Darker colour. We might have opened it up a bit earlier and we let it have a chance to breathe a bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, might <laughs> so, yeah, this one yeah, might sure. need a little bit of... Um, a little bit of air to it. I should have that one. Also. Cool. <laughs> um, you might notice that um, a lot of red wines you might want to open a couple minutes before you start drinking. We don't do that because Russ has a tendency to talk with his hands and um, <laughs> knock things over. If you were watching one of our old Tom gin tastings the other week, <laughs> Russ has a tendency to knock things over. Um, and that's before I've started drinking. Yeah, before he's really had a good drink. So we sometimes like to leave the lids on for safety. And for that reason, I'm going to put the cork back in this time. Um, 
Paula said this one is definitely earthier. Yeah, the mineral, the earthiness to it. But I mean, if, if, you know, if I was just given that as a glass, I would have said it was a, it was one of those really earthy Penrose. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, Ashley, well, yeah, Christine's getting blood pump, plum, not pump. Yep. Um, Ashley's getting pepper, blackberry, and cinnamon. Okay, yep. yeah. Get that. That's a really good Ooh, call. Oh, I definitely get, yeah, the cinnamon -y. Bit of cinnamon. I'd even go as far oh. to say there's like a hint of, um, almost yeah. like clove or star anise yeah, to it. Yeah, that's spicy. Mm. That's why I said it was more spicy like Shiraz can be. Mm. Yeah. Now this will, this I think would be a steak job. This is a steak wine. This is definitely a steak wine. Still, you get away with, with pizza. You've got, you've got that, all, all of that spiciness rice. though comes at the back, like as the, as the after palate. You get that on mm. the palate afterwards. Mm. You get that real dry, cassia sort of. Mm. The front palate has a really dark, rich berry sort of flavour. What's the price on this one? Mm. Twenty four ninety five. Mm. Yeah. So we've gone up by 10 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. This has a really dry finish. Mm. I mm. think this is this will age. Actually. This, the, there's also a little bit of acidity in here, which is quite nice. Um, which means, as Ross says, it will probably age quite nicely because it's got nice a lot of body. Too, mm. This is really interesting, actually. Oh, this one's got more tannins. Ooh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> 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 Yeah, she's <laughs> <laughs> Eva's really cluing into her little keywords. Well, yeah. I was like, oh, that's a different mouthfeel. I was like, tannins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scott Reed. Oh, we've got Scotty on. We've got Scotty on. Scotty's going to be here next week to talk about rum. Rum. Right. Mm. Indeed. Mm. We've decided he's going to be an armchair ex, but he can be back there with you, Vivian. And he just. Oh, I don't. Oh, I. Scott and I are going to be back. We might have to get the taxi home. The peanut. <laughs> the peanut gallery. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Oh, Christina says this is so velvety. Mm. There is a nice yeah, velvety, it's a nice texture to it. Yeah, it's mm. interesting that you mention it as velvety because Ross saying that some Chianti's are blended with a portion of Cabernet or particularly Merlot. Mm. Is there and any blend in that one? No, I think it's pretty much. This one's mostly from what we understand Sangiovese, but there is no complete guarantee that the it's. The Italians aren't as specific. Well, they yeah, you'll notice wine. with the French. No, it said Chianti, so it's met all the rules, and it's D O C G, so it's the top of the yeah, okay. top of the pops. It's not mm. I G T or see, this is I G T. That's D O C G, not D O C. What Ross is talking about is um, classifications of wine regions and no, wine classification. Wine classification. Lisa Reed. Hello, Sharon. Lisa. Hello, Sharon. <laughs> oh, Sharon's on. Yeah, Hello, Lisa and Sharon. Christina said acid at the start and the velvety in the finish. Yeah. yeah. So there is a possibility there sh could be some Merlot in this, which may be contributing to the velvetiness. Or there might be any number of other indigenous varieties to Tuscany in that to make up. You know, there's a whole basket of things that could go in. Indeed. Um, mm. But DOCG says it's from the right region in Tuscany. It's made with all the right grapes and it's made to all the right me methods and... And Measures. should I probably also ask what vintage this is? 2016. 2016. So okay. Older. Oh, 2016. And we were previously tasting a 2018. Mm. Liz so. has said easy drinking for sure. So we've gone from two to four years of age, mm. which might be contributing to that richness, a bit more wood contact. Mm. I think it's been made. It's made in a sort of more, slightly more old-fashioned, woodier style anyway. So it's probably had a bit of. Yeah, more old wood contact that gives it would give it the nuttiness. Yeah, mm. really I agree, Christine. I love Merlot as well, I love Merlot. and uh, we're going to have a Merlot tasting sooner or later. Yeah, mm. before winter's out. Sure. Before yeah. Vivian starts her own riot. <laughs> um, when mm. do we want to be drinking this one? Will we? Will I think we this pair is, it with. This is so. definitely a, a cooler sort of temperature in terms of drinking than something like this sand. Mm. I could drink this when it's a bit warmer, but this. And yeah, a bit more wintry. As well. yeah, yeah. Brett Schwartz, welcome aboard, buddy. Um, <laughs> oh, Brett. Hello, Brett. Um, I think this is this is neat. I think you could mm. get away with the set with the um, the past blunt not having meat. I think mm. this one needs meat. 
I'm on the I'm on the steak with this. I just steak roast beef. I dare say this is a little bit um, drier. It could a bit of game. It could hold yeah. up against some some ball. really heavy meats. Yeah. A bit of like venison would be great. Christine's voting with me on mail though. That's better. Yeah. I've got to think. We've got the beginnings of the movement here. We yeah. didn't we didn't do the colour. The colour's not as purple as that. Yeah, we, we did that at the beginning. It's darker. It's, a, it's one. a darker. It's, darker it's got more it? orange notes. Well, that's which the age. is something we talk about a lot, often meaning it's had a little bit more wood contact or age. Mm. Paula says roaring fire and red meat for sure. Yep, yep. I'm, to- <laughs> yep. I'm totally Wait, on board. Big tick will be there. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. So. You like the fire, Paul will be there. <laughs> for 4.7.30. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Any last notes on that one? Do you want to add? Liz says not for breakfast. Because you get these things narrowed down, I think. That's fair. Yes, this is not Morning a bre- tea? this is not Maybe. a this is not a breakfast key, Auntie. <laughs> no, this is mm. not a breakfast key, Andy. No. Quite right. Beautiful. This is probably actually not a first drink of the day. I w- yeah, no. I would say if you're sitting down for dinner, you would want to have had a glass of something else first. Yes, whereas the the pas- what was the This is the end of a long lunch. Yeah, but, but I think. the but the Pasqua was what did somebody call it? Entry level. Um no, the Gateway. Yeah, so Gateway. Gateway vodka. Was that, that oh, no, one? that was da- Gateway um, Tequila. Gateway, the uh, Patron. Ga- gateway Tequila. <laughs> I, I think Pasqua is possibly your Gateway. Sangiovese. San yeah, That's a good fair. place to start. That could be your first drink of the day. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Gateway. Beautiful. This is um. Now, before we leave Tuscany to move on to bigger and better things, we'll just say a few more things about Sangiovese. Old grape variety. First documented 1540. But probably a lot older. And Sangiovese derives from uh, Latin, but maybe even some say Etruscan before Latin, um, meaning Jupiter's blood. So it's probably one of the oldest grape varieties kicking around. But the Romans obviously trotted around everywhere. So, of which there's probably about another 30 or 40 varieties that are related to it in Italy. But again, mm. so it's been around. Interesting. Now, when you think of things like Pinot Noir and stuff, are probably not anywhere near as old as that. Well, it's interesting to see that some of the older great varieties have turned out to be some of the most robust. Well, that's... In terms of um, the actual grape itself. Well, that's what survives, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Well, it's gonna, if, if it makes good wine, it's going to survive longer than if it doesn't. I'm just surprised there's so much Pinot it. going around. <laughs> <laughs> temperamental. Yeah. T- temper tantrum <laughs> of a grape. about Pinot? This is about Sangiovese. Um, stay on target. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's now we're going to move on. Pizzini, King now Valley. this one is Australian. When did Sange come to Oz? I'm not quite so sure about when Sange came to Oz, but it's been... Well, the Italians have been making wine here for... It's been up in the King Valley with Pinot Grigio and Sangiovese for a long time. Um, as I've probably said before, up in the King Valley, there was a lot of Italian tobacco farmers, and for every... They might have had lots of tobacco, but they always had a couple of acres of grapes sticking around out the back of, with a bit of an orchard and their vegetables patch. And as the tobacco went away, they just replaced it with grapevines. So um, things like Sangiovese and Pinot Grigio, etc., have been up there for quite a long time in the King Valley. It's just, you know, where they used to have 100 acres of tobacco, now they have 100 acres of grapes. Um, it and, smells like tobacco. And Pizzini's yeah, been... Like, yeah. um, one of the older Italian um, labels yeah. from Australia, um, and very true to their Italian heritage. It's interesting to see when we did the um, we did a prosecco tasting a couple of weeks ago. We tasted the Brown Brothers prosecco, and we had a bit of a conversation about Italian varietals in Australia. Um, and I wanted to mention at that stage that Pizzini make a really good. Um, Prosecco. Prosecco. And the reason it was so good in comparison to something like the Brown Brothers is because they're so true to their Italian roots. You know? So. Yeah, yeah. okay. The, uh, in fact, if people haven't drunk a lot of Italian wine, mm-hmm. I always say start with the Bazzini one of that great variety. If you don't like that, you don't like that great variety. Yeah. No, seriously, yeah. you don't like that great variety. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, that's because it's it, it will be well grown, it will be true to type, it'll be well made, and. Um, if you don't like it, it's... Yeah. It's, I would say the same with, um, yeah, their Prosecco, their Pinot Gris, 
all of their wine. If you don't like... Mm. They've never made a bad wine if you don't like it because that's not your thing. No, no, yeah, no, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. Well, Edwards totally has said it's Cal's... Well, yeah, one of Cal's favourite labels. Yeah. 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 I love this. The Pizzini. Oh, and the... Oh, unlike the other two, I'm getting a lot more floral notes on the nose. This is now the same colour as the Pasqua. Yeah. This I is, think it's almost... Oh, this is blood red. Lighter. This yeah. is straight up blood red. Red. Woohoo! Mm. Okay. What is everyone else getting on the nose? Let's talk about a bit of smell. Well, because Russ passed this one to me the other day, and I thought, because I smelt both of them, and I thought this one was a lot more, I guess, smokier mm. or woody. I get that tobacco. I suppose. That's why I'm yeah. I get that sort of dried tobacco smell, but I do get floral to it too, and I think I get that sort of red rose kind of arrangement. Yeah, I'm getting red roses, fresh tobacco. You know, it's not it's not too musky. It's quite it's quite a vibrant. It doesn't have many of those spices that you saw in the middle one. No, it's no. got, and this is a very specific very smell that I always remember. Um, like clay or um, brick dust or Antikar. Like minerally. Um, no, it's not like it's not like slate or things like that. It's quite a, a wet dirt sort of smell. Okay, well, I get you more the Antikari um, kind of thing. And the reason I say Antikar specifically, if you don't know what Antikar is, it's um, the red brick dust that is used on A, old tennis courts, and B, in the cellars, old wine cellars. Um, so they'd lay That's down um, old brick dust in the underground cellars because it absorbs a lot of moisture and it keeps the temperature quite regulated. Mm. Christina said, agree with the floral notes. I'm getting a deep rose blackberry feel. Mm. And Paula said, plum and chocolate for me. Oh, okay. I get a bit of, yeah, a bit yeah. of chocolatiness to it, which is nice. Mm. Yeah. And Ashley said, earthy. Yeah, mm. that earthiness. So we're going that earthy tobacco, chocolate, brick dust, brick it's dirt It's definitely on the more car. vibrant than, than the <laughs> woodiness, floral. spiciness of this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's It's more, yeah. That is really, really nice wine. Mm. As it opens up, it's a bit more the, the fruit starting to come, the you know, plum starting to come through. Mm. Ashley's even said strawberry. I kind of, yeah, I okay. get that. Yeah, I get oh, strawberry. Yeah. The sweetness from it, yeah. Um, just upon having a sip, I can taste the difference between these two because it feels like it completely washed all of that dryness off the palate. It's so, it's got that beautiful Whoa. juiciness. That is. And the chocolatiness, like really creamy, delicious, velvety chocolate is coming through on the palate. Yeah, when you said juicy, I was like, that is exactly mm. what that is. Oh, this is... My glass is nearly empty for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you notice that we're having problems um, analysing the flavours and tasting notes of a wine, it's usually because we're enjoying it slightly too well. much. How's everyone? <laughs> Lost for words. How does everyone feel about the wine? Good, I really bloody like good. It's like juicy, refreshing. Mm. Yeah, nearly. Yeah, it's got a good. <laughs> no, it's, well, compared to the last one that had a very dry finish, yeah. it's sort of it's very got dry. Quite juicy finish. It makes you want to have more. more it's got a yeah. really, it's got a really clean finish on the palate. It doesn't leave too much <laughs> dryness going on. Russ is like, I'm not driving. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, I, I, I have to analyse this properly. I'm just having some problems. This, this reminds me of... My technical difficulties. Put your body on the line. Yeah, there's apples, right. there's berries, there's some, like, dark red apples, I think. Maybe that's just me. Mm. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of what... This has so much going on, it's actually quite hard to peg down certain flavours. Mm. Maybe Ooh, indeed. Christine said berry yoghurt. Ooh, wow. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. yeah, which is it's exactly the taste I normally associate with Merlot actually. Loves it. Okay, what are we gonna well, have what, what are we gonna have to eat with it? Oh, absolutely everything. <laughs> Another glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sanj for dinner, thank you very much. I, I think this would take you from pizza all the way through your red wine. And your mushroom risotto. I could quite happily those. sit down mm. and eat a five course meal and only drink that. Yeah, I think there's not a lot it wouldn't go with. It's pretty robust. 
For sure. It is. Yeah, the whole thing. Mm. You could even drink this with you could drink this with tuna. Oh yeah. Tuna. Um yeah, like a nice a dark tuna, a tuna. <laughs> like a tuna <laughs> steak. Tuna. No, yeah. No, no. Not tuna. tuna. A tuna steak. <laughs> a, a tuna steak. Yeah. This is I still think I'd want something a bit more gamey. I think it'd be good because of the, be good with the fruit and the sweet be, end would be the really nice to go. With, um, we've got to get we've got to get Jerry onto oh. shooting a deer. Um, venison. Goose. 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 Oh. A little bit gamey, a little bit fatty, a little bit juicy. Yeah, I have a duck. Yeah, duck. Do you mean only do with duck, duck goose, goose with turkey. Duck. Mm. Like gamey birds would be great. Well, Bella said, "Oh, didn't think I'd say Australian sand was my fave." Question mark. Yeah. Ooh. Um, Christine said definitely blackberries, and Paula said red apples. Mm. That's the other thing that we like to you know throw in the mix when we do different regions and stuff like that. A lot of people think that you know a French wine is going to be best made from France, and sometimes mm. everyone can do it. And sometimes Australians do a good job too. And I think this is a really good example of when Italian wine doesn't need to be made in Italy. This is bloody great. Yep. Wow. And this is only a 2018, so we're getting a lot of flavour out of a pretty pretty young <laughs> wine. Will this, this one keep, you think? Probably not as long as the Chechi. I don't know. I, I think it will stand Ashley up. Says, duck, duck. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I love. <laughs> no, I think that will stand up with a bit of bottle age. I think. Has a. Six oh. to, I think six to ten, be good. I six to ten years. Yeah. yeah, it's got a nice structure to it. It's very full body. Which the thing with this is this is enough structure to last for a long time, but I don't think it's got enough fruit, so it'll start to lose flavour. It'll be one of those things that drinks well, but there's not a lot to it. it. Disappears. Yeah. Whereas so this is this has got a lot going on. Mm. Hasn't got as much structure, but the fruit will stand up. So. Yeah. You know, I think to do a really good one, it has to be somewhere between the two, and then you're heading into Barolo territory. Indeed, but maybe we'll leave that for another tasting. <laughs> After Merlot, thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, we're finding it quite difficult to choose things to taste because we it's going to be a very long list of things that we all want to drink. Well, That's all right. We've, we've got, got, this for a long we've got time. plenty of time to do it. Oh, sure. So, um, and we're not in any rush to stop drinking. <laughs> uh, no, so no. while we're on that note... Well, Colette has said, I want duck, but I agree with pasta. And Ashley said, our team is drinking it slower. There's a lot of structure. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of structure behind this. And duck ragu mm. with pasta. Bloody brilliant. I couldn't agree more. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, any last notes on Sanj? Or any, do you have a favourite? I think, are we unanimous? I don't know. I think I like all of them. Oh, it's hard so to say. I need to take, oh, I can't remember which one was which now. Do you put them on order? No, I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> I like the I like the Pizzini. I think the Pizzini is the best. Um, not the best. I think the most. I think they they are in order. The Pizzini is the one I like the best. I think the Pizzini is the most versatile. I think yeah. this is a great coughing wine pizza in the middle of the week. This is a great sit down for a hardcore wine drinking session. Um, and this one is just a good all rounder. We'll do absolutely everything. Oh. Yum, 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 yum. And so what are we doing next week, boys and girls? Oh, boys and rum girls. Rum time. Ooh. It's rum time. Oh, let me just put this slightly closer to me. <laughs> <laughs> next week is rum. Exciting. Rum, rum, rum. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we're doing the Atherton Estate, sort of as, yeah. Um, our East London liquor, Demerara oh. rum, and we've got the Florida Cana seven year. So... Same as always, let us know if you'd like a flight. We're doing the 100 mil flights, as yeah. per usual. Um, and we're pretty excited because in winter we like to do darker spirits. And we know that a lot of the time, a lot of people's first encounters are spice drums. So these aren't spice drums. We're sort of bringing something different for people to taste. Slightly darker rums. Um, and I think this is Very a Very really yummy rum. And what do they need to have with it? What are we garnishing with? Ooh, what are we garnishing with? Let's um, jump straight in and say oh, lime, ginger, orange, and get some ginger ale. Ginger ale. Yeah, and then we're going to be doing gin again the week after, citrus gins. Um, but yeah, I'll post the event Yeah, we'll get tomorrow. to that when we get to that. Yeah, so you'll... So we're going to some different citrusy gins. Um, also, we've been so impressed this week with everyone's um, oh, yeah. photos of their tasting flights and their social interactions. 
we're finding that because we don't have a lot of customers in store, we're really loving yeah, getting to like, see yeah. people drinking <laughs> at home. Got a prize. Well, we... We're, I don't know if she's online, but Jen Dranks... On Instagram. On Instagram has been absolutely cocktails. phenomenal. And the tiramisu she made out of the Patron. Yeah, we had. I mentioned the tiramisu, and lo and oh. behold, she made it faster yeah. than I could get to it. Where's my sample? Exactly. <laughs> um, so we'll probably be sending her a little gift of some rum yeah. next week. So I think it's been as soon as we get into the job, I was like, Luke, have you seen Jen's post? Yeah, <laughs> and it's the can, first conversation can we had. had a nice photo with her wines today, with the her, oh, her yes. and the teddy bear in the sun. I liked yes. that a lot. Yeah, yeah special fantastic. mentions to Carmen. That was yeah. lovely. Yeah, mm. beautiful. Fantastic. Well, I know yum, 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 yum. Uh -huh. We swap tag. Well, we have Vivian. We have a special, on screen present. A, a special guest from, um, as Jen would say, the Yellow Wiggle. Now, while we were talking about citrus, this, ladies and gentlemen, is obviously a citrus. What is this, Luke? This is a Clementine. Can you believe that? Oh, now, I'm so excited. For those of you, oh. I'll, you've got my nails are real. I paid a lot of money for those. Uh, for those of you who have been watching on a regular basis, we had a conversation and where Luke said in the gin tasting, was it, about Clementine? Oh, I think It smells so. like Clementine. And we all went, how do you know what Clementine smells like? And Liz, thank you very much, um, managed so, to find some Clementines and drop them off at our house. Um, Clementines are actually in season at the moment. Which so is I great. thought, to be honest with you, if I had seen one of these, I would have thought it was just a mandarin. Clementines are between oranges and mandarins, and they're quite closely related to things like pomelos and tangerines. Right. So you so, go learn something new every day. Really interesting flavour. More acidic than an orange. Um, and a little bit... I don't think it goes with Sangiovese, though. That's uh, well, right. we're going to taste it. doesn't matter. You don't have to. <laughs> I'm not going And pairing for Sangiovese is Clementine. Clementine. Yeah, so no. here we go. Ah! Hot twist. It'll make not up your just completely. a mandarin. Oh, yum. Mm. That's really nice. Thank you, Liz. It's... Um, it's a bit sweeter than a mandarin. Mandarins can be a little bit bitter sometimes. And it's got beautiful um, texture. It's a little really bit more like floral, it. a little bit more meaty in terms of texture. I would have said that about this Sangiovese, <laughs> quite frankly. Just watching Ross in the You see, we don't have to just do sand. wine. We can do all sorts of things. So for those of you who only get all of your fruit in bottles, <laughs> here it is in real life form. Well, this is, oh. the, but this well, is the perfect way to get fruit juice. What do you Go doing? on, try some um, sand with, with Clementine. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't know because I haven't been... The juiciness works, the acidity levels are slightly different. I don't know if he's online, but hello to my mate, um, Jenks, Peter Jenkins. Jenks and I were at school together, good lord. And, um, he's People are really coming out of the woodwork, aren't they? People up-tasting Sanj in, um, up in the mm. country. So mm -hmm. that's great. Welcome. Awesome. So thanks everybody for coming and join us next week for Fabulous Rum, as per, and... Get in early if you want them delivered, and get in early if you want the gins after that, for those yeah. of you who aren't. Yes, um, with the gin, if you are out of Melbourne, please message by end of day tomorrow, as Monday is a public holiday, mm. so I can't yeah. post them on Monday, um, so it makes it a little bit hard. Yeah, so we're posting the gin event probably tomorrow. Um, if you do, if you are interested in gin, we've got citrus-flavoured gins. If you do want a tasting flight and you are interstate, please let us know as soon as physically possible. Um, yeah. We can't always guarantee things like Australia Post and couriers but at the time. If they don't get there in time, all of the recordings are online. So if they when, if the gin arrives after the tasting, you can always just play the tasting and drink along. Play along at home. So thanks oh, very much for coming. Oh, they are on Facebook now. Are we still posting them all on YouTube, like. <laughs> Sorry, I just like that Ash made the comment. Blue crayon, red crayon, yellow crayon. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Wiggles. Yeah. <laughs> we have previously been described as the, the My sister the and I used to be the MasterCard. <laughs> I'm yellow, he's, she's red. All right, mm. bye guys. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Stay have safe. Fun. Stay drinking. Cheers.